to 30 minutes with JSW. Today, we are looking at the topic, choose to win. Choose to win. We've been praying. This is February, and we've been praying. And uh, every time that a believer gather to pray, a lot of people do not understand what we're actually doing. Uh, I know people that please mute this mic and help me so that not that mic is on mute instead when I'm teaching. So every time we gather to pray like this, well. All right, sorry about that. Every time we get out to pray, like we're doing in this month of February, what we're actually doing is gathering our strength, building our trenches, preparing to win. When you're going to go into a battle that you're going to win, you have to have the foresight. You have to have a plan. You have to have a strategy for winning. I know people that they just pray throughout the year. And they've prayed throughout 40 years. And they have nothing to show for their prayer, prayerful existence. Now, I'm not talking about one person. I'm talking about thousands of people that I know that go and they pray, 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 pray. Because they just assume that by praying, 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 that's how somebody wins in life. That's not how somebody wins in life. There is no example of that in the Bible at all. The true examples of the reality of life and practical uh, ad adoption of spiritual strategy of winning is that the believer gathers and prays like Jesus will do in the night. They will pray, they take time to pray. Then after they have prayed, they will go out and begin to conquer. David will ask the question, should I go? Should I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? That is the moment of prayer. They will, the, he and his soldiers will gather around, they will get a beat at the priest, and then he will ask this question. Just like somebody consulting a divine man in those old days and saying, help me ask the Lord, should I do this? And then when they pray and they get the go ahead from God, they didn't just sit down there and say, God should go and fight the battle. No, the instruction they get in the place of prayer then gives them the confidence to go and charge at the enemy and win. That's supposed to be quite simple. That's supposed to be. So every time we pray, just that uh, many people in Africa, for example, their prayer life is always centered around enemy of this, enemy of that. So they do not pray strategic prayers that can lead them into success. When Elijah was going to pray, Elijah said, let there be no rain. But when he was saying, let there be no rain, that was his strategy. He knew he had to survive because it also affects him. So he had, he had locked the heavens for rain. Then the next thing was he moved to a brook where there would be water. And he stayed there for six months. And ravens were bringing him food and he was drinking free water. But there was no water anywhere. So that brook also dried up. It was the one that dried up the brook. So then, second strategy, move to the house of that widow and then continue to reproduce her food for two and a half years until he had to come out. And when he came out again, there was a new strategy. The strategy was to bring back the rain and encourage the flourishing of the economic activities around all of Samaria and Israel. So you see, there was a strategy to pray and there was a choice to win. So people go through life hoping that they would make it. I'm not one of those. Uh, so people just felt, if I'm lucky, I'll have my breakthrough. Or, or maybe God will be merciful and I, I will get there. But that is not how to win. Winning is a determination, a decision, a choice. Failure is also a choice. If you look at scripture, you will see how clearly it was written. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your seed may live. Choosing life is choosing to win. It is a choice. Some people will listen to me and they say, oh, 
But I came into this scene as a, at a disadvantage. Some of you are born Christians. I, I was listening to one Nigerian musician saying it uh, on one of our concerts, and she said, no, some people came into this thing as Muslims. You, you are fourth generation Christian. So the battle they have to fight and the battle you have fought, and your parents have fought for you are different. So all of you are not in the same category. That is nonsense. If I've ever heard anything that is not gospel, that is it. That, that somebody is fourth generation pastor's son, and that person just became a Christian yesterday and was a Muslim. And so both of them are fighting different battles because the one from a Muslim background has a lot of battles because of his past background. And the one that the, the father and grandfather and great grandfather are pastors, it's already, the battles are already fought. So he will have a free, you know, it, when people are trying to logicalize the reality of the gospel, they say things like that. They say things like that to, to tell themselves as an excuse for failure. I'm going to tell you this, so you understand it. That thing is a lie. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you became a new creature. The option before you was to win. If, if you, there is no other, other alternative. There is no other alternative. It is, it is a winning, a serial winning streak life that you have found yourself in. And it doesn't matter whether you are educated or uneducated. It doesn't matter whether you came in as a mother of five, or you came in as a widow, or you came in as a as a serial concubine, or you came in as a side chick. It doesn't matter how you come in. Are you in? You just have to adjust the lens and focus of your targets. What are you aiming for now? What are you aiming for? There are things that you aim for that are horizontal, which is where many of the believers do not get it. There is a difference between vertical aim and horizontal aim. If I come into Christ and my aim is to marry, it's a horizontal aim because it requires the consent of another person. You have to understand that. This is God, God has never forced another human being to do the will of another human being in all of history. If you have a horizontal aim, you are not aiming vertical. You're not praying, oh, oh, father, oh, 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 husband, wife, husband, wife, and that. So your aim is horizontal. When it comes to horizontal aim, even in old Israel, it is uh, it, there is there are elders that are approached horizontal aims. In today's world, because of the way Christianity has become and everybody's doing whatever they like, it is fine. But you must, you must understand how to differentiate so that you do not run a race in one spot. You do not put your vertical aims on a hold. You know, I remember when I was growing up, uh, one of the things I heard in the Badon was that a, a lady that wants to get married must not have a car because if she buys a car, she will not get a husband. The lady that wants to get married should not have her own apartment. If she gets an apartment, nobody would ask for a hand in marriage. A lady that wants to get married, uh, that's the way she should dress. Uh, she should not be seen as wealthy because it will intimidate the prospects that want to marry her. As I grew older, I realized that it was because we were poor. Poor people are bad philosophers. So you see, when poor people, when they are giving advice, it will make sense because they are poor. So they, they do not know how to think. Their situation has so conditioned them that they cannot think right. That's a fact. And because of that, they can't win. They limit their own children from becoming successful because they believe that if you become too successful, then you are going to lose out on some things. Well, that is not true. As I grew older and I studied the scriptures and I looked at how those who have, who have won in life, how they conducted themselves and their affairs, you begin to see that there's a winning mentality that is instilled in some people that they can't lose. 
and they, they are going to live the best of life and they, they will not be cheated out of anything. And they will not condition their backup blessings upon uh, some other variables that, that may never happen or that will happen and then it will not give them a lot of pain. No, they condition, they, they, they program their children for success 100%, knowing that other parents are also programming their children for success and those ones only success can attract them. Why, what, why would I want to be with somebody who doesn't want me to shine? I, I must be shining and then the person must see me shining and say, yeah, I want that star. Why is it that you don't want the, the, the brightest star in the room? You want the one that, that has potential to shine but must dim its light so that it can be attractive. What logic? What logic is in dimming your light so that you can be attractive? It is poor people thinking, people that have chosen to lose. That is not a Christian way. The Bible says, therefore, let your light so shine. Jesus speaking. Jesus does not give condition for anybody to dim their light. This is kind of knowledge that came from poor people. Rich people, for example, there are some rich people that came from very wealthy homes. And it is not their fault. For example, when Queen Elizabeth of England wanted to get married, her father couldn't have told her, hey, be going to the, be, be a pauper, be pretending you are a pauper, so that you can get us banned. Because if they know you are rich, it will intimidate the men. You know, that, that, of course not. She was raised to be royal. And therefore, the kind of men she attracted were also of royal leaning. The cream of the cream de la cream, top of the top of the top, the very best. Why? Because she is the very best. The best must attract the best. But these are horizontal limits. So then you see somebody that is so successful in life, and then she will start hanging around poor people. And then they will say that, look at her, look at her. She's a banker. She became banker at 23, became manager at 30. And look at her now. Nobody wants to be with her because she's the richest person in this church. Or guy leave that church. You are swimming in a small pond. All this, all this will look at her kind of thing. You don't be a, a non-thinker. If you, if you see yourself and you look at around you and you see that all those around you are very poor. Ron, what are you doing there? That is not your pond. You cannot find somebody that is so you always when they look at you, you do not find yourself wasting away because you do not have a winning mentality. You do not know how to shape yourself. In mathematics, we did what they call sets. Sets. You know what they call sets? Yeah. Sets. When you do that set, you know what belongs in a class and what does not belong. So when you are... <laughs> I'm doing mathematics this morning, but I have to. Because sometimes... The reason we lose and we don't win on every side is because we do not understand there is progress. Look at David. David began to win in Saul's house. He was winning. Then Saul said, oh, kill this boy. Then David said, okay, I'm running. Then David had to go and restart in the land of Philistine. Started all over again. Then he began to win. It took him time. About two, three years he had adjusted. Then he began to win in the land of Philistine. He began to win so much. He had a city called Ziglag. Then the Philistines said, ah, oh, we cannot leave this guy behind. If we leave him behind, he will raid all our place. We are taking him to war. So they took David to war. And then when they got to the place of battle, they said, oh, we don't trust him. If he goes to war with us, now, he can turn against us in the middle of the battle. Send him back home. So then they sent him back home. By the time he got home, he had lost everything. See? And then he went to God and he prayed and he said, hey, what do I do? Then God said, pursue. Then he pursued, he recovered all. After the recovering all, David moved to Hebron, next stage of growth. He didn't stay in Keilah. He didn't stay in Ziglag. He moved to Hebron. When he got to Hebron, he came into Hebron as a mighty man. He understood that he, he said, 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 when you, are, when you are swimming with 20s, you are swimming with 20s. When you know that you are now 50, you move to the level of 50. When you know you are now 100, move to the level of 100. You do not care. You do not care to say, oh, I'm, fam I'm familiar with this church. I don't want to leave my church. Meanwhile, nobody in that church would dare say hello to you. 
No, those, those are horizontal issues, though. But I'm trying to make you see that it is, it is because of that mentality that you have found yourself pegged at a particular aspect or in a particular aspect of your life. You are, you are the reason. Because you did not see the set you belong to, to hang there. There are some people that would deliberately go and hang in a set where nobody will consider them. They are poor. They went to go and sit down in one big church where there are a lot of rich people, where, where everybody would be looking at them like house girls. They will do the makeup, do everything, try to fit in, but they know you don't have anything. Find your set. Build with your set. This is how to win horizontally. It is just, just the way it should be. Balangui is said, birds of a feather will flock together. Uh, so it, it has to be English, but I just remember the English. <laughs> so horizontally, when it comes to relationship issues, sex, sex, you would be married if you would follow your sex, if you would not be sentimental and say, this is our family tech. I don't want to leave it. But this pastor was kind to my mommy. Auntie said, find your set. Where your kind gathers, that is where you go. That is how it is done. Otherwise, you'll find a mismatch and you will not like the life you are going to live. It is not, it's not good for a winner to, to be with somebody that is a loser because it just, it just, it just causes your apothecary to stink. Now, on the vertical issues, the thing that you want to accomplish, that you can accomplish on your own without having to look at anybody's constant assent, yes, no, support. The things you can achieve by yourself, your goals. There is nothing in this world that can stop you from achieving them. I say it with 100% conviction. Not one thing. It is a choice to win or to quit or to back out. It is a choice. It is a choice. When you need help on the way, help will come. But if you will keep on that, on that path with your declarations and prayer, and you are always thinking, you know, there's a way a believer, a winning, a believer with a winning mentality, there's a way they think. You will never hear them say, well, it is what it is. It is the economy. It is government policy. I've tried my best. I am tired. Eh? How can you be tired at 25 or 28 or 35 or 30? What? What is kind of, that was how Elijah said he was tired and God tired him. You can I never say you are tired. That debris is not tired. Though. Light up everywhere. There's nothing that man has not accomplished in this life and in Christ. And he's still lighting up people at 80 something. He didn't go, he refused to retire. That the Kumuya is not, is not tired. You are tired of something. I have tried this. I have tired. That this. I'm just lazy. 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 lazy people who have winning mentality will be frustrated because they will like good things, but they don't want to work hard to get it. And so they become leeches. I, have a, I had a friend like that. He's no longer my friend. He likes the best things in life, but he, he, just, he just wouldn't apply himself. So if you give him a shirt, he'll say, no, I can never wear this shirt. But he, he will not walk the one and buy his own. <laughs> As if a beggar can have a choice. You want to wear, you want to wear TM. But you are not willing to walk. To <laughs> you want to wear Gucci, but you are not willing. <laughs> who will be who will afford your lifestyle? Last, last you become a gigolo. Last, last, and it is because you cannot you cannot apply yourself. Choose to win. When I was much younger, one of the reasons I refused to fail was because I would look at the TV and I would see people like King Sonia Day. I would see somebody like Barista. These are not Christians, though. Colinton. Salawa Abeni, all those uh, non-literate singers. And I'll say that they have, they have houses, they have big cars. You know, do you know what it does to me? I used to look at this guy, I used to say, ah, how can I fail in this life? This man, <laughs> this man is so educated. I'm looking at somebody that's so educated, that people are saying, oh, they're spending money for him. I say, ah, if this man is not educated and they can be this rich, and he's surrounded by sharks, Family members will come and collect money. Friends will come and collect money. Everybody expects you to be giving them, and he's giving them, and he's not running out of money. How, how, how can I be poor? It, 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 I remember telling uh, Reverend Doctor uh, 
Elles sont avec nous. Non, 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 non. Tella, Reverend Dr. Tella, he was the pastor of our church when I was just about to leave the university. And he had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. And we sat down and he said to me, he said, ah, what do we do now about this, your uh, mini crisis? I want to call the vice chancellor. I said, no, 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 sir, no, sir. Don't call anybody. <laughs> he said, well, I said, I said, mark my words. When they would hear of my greatness, they would they would sit down and say, This is our product. I that was what I told her, told him. He was shocked. I said, Mark my words, sir. I'm going to be so successful. I do not need a degree to be successful. And that's what I told him. I said, I will not go, I will not go and sit down. I'm not going to any place. I'm not going. No, 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 no. I've I, I have what I have i am I'm a first class material in my mind through and through. I am well educated, established, a born again Christian, full of the Holy Spirit. Nothing can by any means stop me. I will win. And the man said, if that is your conviction, then I agree with you. Every time the man sees me, till today, every time he sees me, he will bless me. I will prostrate, he will bless me. He will say, of all my children, of all the children I raised as a spiritual children, you stood out. You knew from day one you would be a success. You knew. Because I, I, there is nothing else. Uh, failure was not an option. It, it was not an option. If I wanted to fail, I had every reason to fail. I had exploited them long before I became born again. After I became born again, failure was not part of the, of the choice. There is no choice. He said, I said before you, life and death. Then he said, choose life. He didn't say, like, uh, choose anyone you want. No, he said, choose life. He, he said, this is the one. <laughs> GSW, this is the one to choose. Choose to win. I'm not choosing to win dirty. Not choosing to win by cheating. Not choosing to win the No, 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 no. Win clean. Win clean. Win clean with your full chest. That they will use that thing to to come and beg you 10 years later to say, oh, God, come and take your degree. <laughs> Even though you don't need it, take it. You have to understand it is a mentality. It doesn't matter where you are starting from. Don't forget what I told you about that horizontal thing because it affects the vertical. I know a lot of people that will have gone far in life, but because they keep looking at themselves, ah, hey, husband, husband, or wife, wife, then they peg themselves. No, you must continue to strive. The, 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 the more successful you are, the lower the number of people you can pick from. You understand? Like when you have a fish farm, you know, those things they call fingerlings, they are very many. They'll put them and they'll be giving them food. They, they will now be eating each other. They'll be eating each other. At the point where you want to harvest them, the number you put them in 500, you may end up harvesting maybe 200. The hair. So then you know that 300 are gone. But the, the, the 300 are the pond that, so they begin to, they will be sorting out the fishes so that the bigger ones will be eating the smaller ones. Even fishes know that they have to swim in sets. It's only people that are so sentimental that they do not calculate where they should be. Practical, practical wisdom. It doesn't mean you have to leave the denomination you are. But if you have a denomination and the, the, this particular part of the denomination is full of poor people, <laughs> and you have determined to be rich in your life, don't stay there. It is not about uh, gospel can prosper you anywhere. They do not have the mentality or the message or the kind of food, the spiritual food you need to eat to succeed run to a better place where you have people who will share the same mindset with you, where you can have the right connections, where you can have the right motivations and networking, where experiences will be shared. And those experiences will help you in order to make good decisions as you grow. You must swim in your set. Don't forget that. That's how to win horizontally. Always be in your own set. That way, all those who envy you and begin to gossip about you, they will not even be close to you because the people you are swimming with, all of you have the same thing. People gossip because you are greater than them, you are better than them, you are sharper than them, and they envy you. That's why they begin to talk about you behind your back. People don't talk about people they are greater than. They always talk about people that are greater than them. You see? So don't stay there. Those things are, uh, we don't have distraction like excreta of, uh, of uh, failure. All those things apply when you are not swimming in the right set. Move to the right set. That is one of the first steps of winning both horizontally and vertically. Then when it comes to the vertical things, as long as you're in the right set, set your eyes like a flint. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Ha! Kalidia Nana. Ha! Hey, I said the Lord before me. I'm looking at him. He is at my right hand. I will not be shaking. You see, you will wake up in the morning motivating yourself. I'm winning. There is nothing that can stop me. I am. All I'm going for is the best of the best of the best of the best. I'm not going to settle for less. I'm not going to earn less. I'm going to, I'm not negotiating myself out of a good deal. Every day I move. I move with a purpose. I am winning. This is why we pray. We pray so that we do not have to pray later. We are praying now, praying, building up our prayer uh, assets and uh, our reserves. When you get out there, it is finishing move. Myself and my children are playing combat combat yesterday, so I, I, I left some of the finishing moves with them. I, I was winning. I, I, I did not say that. Oh, there are little children and older. No, if I get involved in any game, I will win. I must win. It is, it is my, I have to win. I cannot lose. So it's that I don't play. But once I get into that free, it is a winning thing. There is no, I do not say to, I'm not kind in that regard. I will win. Yeah, I must win. I must come out on top. It is my desire and determination. And everyone who is a believer must have that mindset. No compromises. Jesus won. The Bible said, Jesus won fair and square. The Bible said, Jesus went with a strategy that the devil does not understand. He said, if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You have to understand that when Jesus came into the game, the devil was trying to use the same strategy he used for Adam and Eve for Jesus. He did not know that was the master plan. Jesus waited, waited. He executed that master plan in the middle of the night. The devil even participated, not knowing that he was going to lead to him losing all his captives that were in hell. Jesus was a winner all through. The Bible said when he got to hell, he held captivity captive. He had, he had taken the source code of life. He had executed it upon himself. He got into hell and they've never seen this kind of being before. He got there and everybody fell on their knees and they didn't know what to do. Then he set the captives free. All of the saints that have waited for thousands of years for his coming, they saw him and they glorified God. They, Jesus himself said that they rejoiced to see his day. They rejoiced to see his day. This is the one whose DNA is running in you. A compulsive winner. The one who has never lost a battle. The one who will win strategically, who will win in the field of battle, who would win in the place of economy, who would win in the place of marriage. The one that on all spheres of influence has never lost is your father. You shouldn't have a losing mentality. And I'm not doing motivation in the world. This is not for the loss of power. I'm just showing you you are. You are a winner. The code in you is a winning code. The source code that made you is a source code of light. The light does not lose. But if you can think well and you can position yourself well, you will see how you will win. But if you continue to do sentiment, say, I want to stay in this place. I want to stay in this place. You will just see that all sort of nonsense. Yeah? Uh -huh. And then at the end of the day, you will not achieve all your goals. Why? Because you didn't swim with your set. You must learn how to do sex. You sit down, you evaluate. Once you see everybody around you are not in the same mindset, do not have the same mentality, and all of you are not in the same ranking anymore, do your research, move. It is now a small pond, and you are now a big fish. You must think like that. That is the only way that a believer continues to win horizontally. You must continue to have the same mindset, the same understanding, the same language with those that are around you. You must continue so that you will not be condescending to some people and then some people begin to dislike you and then they begin to envy you. All those things come as a result of not streaming in your set. And then on the vertical things, you are preparing your 20s now, you are praying. Once you begin to make your declaration and you set out, you can only come home every day as a winner. As you go to your churches today, I declare that you are a blessing. I declare that you win. I declare that all the believers that have to come around you, when they come and they come in touch with you, they, they are ignited into winning. I declare that the power of the Holy Spirit is high and mighty upon you. 
and that you are graced on every side to show for the glory of the one who has called you with the holy calling. I declare that by your hand, great miracle signs and wonders will happen. I declare that by your words that you will speak, a lot of hearts that are in darkness will be enlightened. I declare you are a winner. I declare you have chosen to win and success has chosen to be your Lord. Thank you, Father, for it is sorted. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can somebody unmute and shout, Glory! 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 Glory!